Okay guys, today I'm going to be showing you guys how to get started on the Hummer or the truck project. First thing you guys need is the Hummer or truck handout and it gives you a pretty simple set of instructions as well as the drawing that you're trying to create. We're going to be using uh, some new tools today, the line tool, circle tool, arc, copy and erase. Uh, as well as the polyline offset trim fillet tool and then of course there might be some new ones in there as well. Um, and then it gives us our, our Hummer and, and there's some pretty simple things about our Hummer. It doesn't give us a lot of dimensions but it tells us that it's 18 feet long, 6 feet tall and that would be from ground to top and that our tires are 32 inch diameter. Now that is again not a lot to work with but it opens it up for a lot of creativity and you guys can of course customize your Hummers however you like. But at least we can get started with that. So I'm going to start with opening up AutoCAD like I have, and I'm going to uncheck everything down here because I don't usually like these things being these blue boxes and these selections and the grid and all that stuff. I try to get rid of all that. And you guys, when you first start, may have more things down here selected. Go ahead and just unclick them all, and then we can check the ones back on that we want when we need them. So I'm going to use the first thing I always do in AutoCAD when I open up a new AutoCAD is I type in units. Okay and I change my units to architectural. This is very important. You guys will have problems right from the get-go if you guys do not do this. So make sure we do that. Okay, so units are changed. And I'm going to use my line tool. And I have a truck that is 18 feet long. And so I'm going to use that to my advantage to start to play with it. So I select the line tool up here. And I'm going to click anywhere on my screen. And I'm going to this time turn on my ortho mode because I do want to draw a straight line. And I'm going to pull it to the right and I'm going to type in 18 feet. Now notice it pops up down here, 18, and you have to have a little hash mark for feet, otherwise it will not work. And I press enter. Okay, and I can then press escape to get out of the line tool. You hit my zoom extents over here, and I can zoom out a little bit, and I have my line just like so. Okay, Then I can do a couple things here. Now I know it's six feet tall, so let's just save ourselves some time. I'm going to use the offset key, and the easiest way to do that is just to type in O, for offset, again, pops it down here. First thing is offset. I can either check this or I can just press enter. Okay, and it tells me specify offset distance. Okay, all my instructions, remember, are always given to me down here in AutoCAD. If I ever get lost, I just look down here at my ribbon, is what this is called, to see what's going on. Or, I'm sorry, actually, command bar to see what's going on. So, O for offset, I'm going to type in six feet because that's how tall my Hummer is, and I'm just going to do this. Okay. And that now gives me a Hummer that's going to be this long, 18 feet long, 6 feet tall. Okay. And then I use my line tool again. This time I might use my object snap. And this allows me to snap on the ends. And it gets this little square, which the green square means that's going to hit the very end of it. Okay. Now, let's just say, I'm just going to delete this for a second. Let's say I decided to just try to wing it and just do my own line. Turn off object snap. Use the line tool. Okay, it's about there to about there. Okay, what happens is no matter how precise you think you are, you're always going to get it off a little bit, and that causes a lot of problems in AutoCAD. So you really need to use the object snap when you are trying to snap lines together. So again, click on it, line tool, square, square, perfect. Okay, now my Hummer should fit in this shape approximately. We're just guessing here. Okay. So I'm going to do some wheels here. Now my wheels, again, are 32 inch diameter. That means the center of my wheels would be half of that. So I'm going to use the offset tool, O for offset, and I'm going to offset 18 inches. Now I don't need to put hash marks in here because inches is the default unit. So if I just type in a number, it's going to assume that inches are what I want to use. 18. Okay, select my object to offset. I'm going to select this line right here. And now specify point or side on side to offset offset. So I want to go above it. So I'm going to click somewhere above. Boom. And now I know my wheels must fall somewhere in this line. So I'll use the circle tool here. And I want to still use object snap, but I want to use a new object snap that I haven't used. So what I do is I right click on the object snap. I'm going to go to settings and I'm going to turn on nearest because nearest is a good one. You can change these. Some of these you'll want on. Some of these you might want on. For instance, I might not want extension on. I might want one intersection on. And you can play with these and see what you guys like. But I'm going to use nearest. I usually always have nearest on. Okay. And I'm just going to guess about where that front tire is. So, okay, the nearest is, looks like a little hourglass. And that means I'm going to be on that line somewhere. And you need to do that. 
and I'm going to pull it up and it says specify radius of circle. Well, we know we want to do a 16 inch radius. And there we go. Now it looks like I made a little mistake. Half of 32 is not 18, half of 32 is 16. So let's fix some things here. And I'll start over there. So O for offset, 16 inches. Boom. Circle. Again, still have my nearest. And I want a 16 inch radius. Now we should be perfect. Good check right there to see how we're doing. Okay, so there's the size of my tires. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do next is Okay, so I'm going to continue building my tire here and I look at my tire and, and a lot of stuff we're just guessing on and I'm going to use my circle tool one more time. This time I want to use the center tool, so I'm going to change my object snap settings. And I'm going to use the center tool to make sure the center tool is selected. It looks like it already is. Sometimes to get it, you have to actually go to the outside of the circle that you're trying to highlight. And there's my center. And I'm going to draw the rim of my tire. And then I'm just kind of watch, looking exactly how these tires are. Again, you guys don't have to do it exactly the same. But it's a good start. And I might turn off object snap for a second because I don't want to get, want to get close to that edge, but I don't want to be on it. Okay turn it back on and a quick way to turn it on and off is actually F3 turns it on and off so if I type F3 it should turn object snap on again tells me right there that I did in my command bar and circle again and I can draw my tires there we go Okay, good start to my tires there. Now I want to do the lug nuts on my tires, so I'm going to use the circle tool one more time. Turn off ortho, turn off object snap, and I'm going to put my lug nuts, you know, I'm just going to guess about where I want them to go, but about there. Okay, now I don't want to just guess every all the way around. And of course, if I don't like exactly where it is, I can select it. I could use the move tool, and I can move it wherever I like. That looks a little better. But I'm going to use a new tool called Array. So I'm going to select the Array tool, and I want to use a Polar Array. So I select the little arrow next to it, and there's Polar Array. I can now select this guy right here. Again, it told me to select objects. I press Enter. Spacebar, by the way, is the same as Enter. And specify center point of Array. Okay, that needs to be the center of this circle that's going to go around. So I'm going to put my object snap back on because I want to get the exact center. There it is. Okay. And now it says enter number of items. Well, on my drawing there's five lug nuts. So I'm going to try and follow that. You guys don't have to, but I am going to. So I'm going to type in five. And specify the angle to fill. And it says by default it goes to 360 degrees. We want to do a full circle. So we are going to just go ahead and press enter because 360 degrees works for us. And now I just put the lug nuts in there for us. Now, I don't want to do that all again for the other tire. So what I will do. So I will select it and I'm going to use now what I did there by the way is if I use if I click and use the green box to select it selects everything in there everything the green box touches to get selected but I only want to select the tire so I'm going to actually click and select using a blue box so I actually just drag it to the right it gives me the blue box drag it to the left it gives me green box I want to drag it to the right for a blue box only selects everything that completely falls inside of that box so I selected that guy I'm gonna use the copy tool okay and I want to copy it from the center point so it says select base point or specify base point and I want to get that center point okay so I have object snap on okay so I want to grab it there and I want to put it along the line somewhere on the line and kinda of guess about where the tire should go now I have two exact copies. I can begin to do things like trim things out that I don't want. So TR is the quick command for trim, or I can always go up here and select trim. Again, select objects to trim. Okay, these are our cutting edges. Enter, and I can trim out the parts that I don't want. There we go. Starting to get the beginnings of my Hummer. Starting to look like Hummer. Now, a couple of things I notice with this box is that my Hummer, if I look at my sheet, 
it seems to be divided into thirds. The front third being the hood, the middle third being the cab, and the back third being the uh, back or the tailgate of the Hummer. That's just an approximation. You guys can fudge and play with it, but it's a good start. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to break my box into thirds as well. So I'm going to use the offset tool. Okay, O for offset. Last time it says you offset Mr. Myers, you use one foot four inches or the 16 inches to do this. Do you want to use it again? No, we don't. So we're going to type in our own. And I want to go ahead and break this into thirds. So 18 divided by 3 is 6. I'm going to type in 6 feet. I'm going to click on this line and then click on the side to offset. So click there. Now I'm still in the offset command, so I'm going to do it one more time. Select this guy, click over, and boom, and now I've broken the thirds. And that gives me a good start of where I want to be. Okay. I'm also going to use a new tool that I haven't used yet called the polyline tool. Sometimes this is good, sometimes it's not. But I'm going to start with the polyline tool. And what a polyline tool is, I'll actually show you over here, is if I zoom out and move over, Okay, and to get the hand, by the way, all I do is push on the roller on the mouse, and it gives me the hand. You can zoom out this way. But the polyline tool, if I use the line tool, first of all, and I draw a couple lines, it gives me each line in its own segment. If I use the polyline tool and do a couple things, all the lines are connected. Now, that's good for some reasons, especially if I want to do polylines with arcs in them, because I can do a polyline tool. And then I notice down here it says specify next point, which I've been doing. Okay. Or, and it gives me all these other selections. Okay. Art, close, halfway length, blah, 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 blah. Well, the capital letters in any of these is a new command and a new option. So I'm going to use the arc, A for arc. If I type in A for arc, and I actually get an arc that is perfectly coming off of this line right here. And then I can do the next one and so forth. And that becomes a helpful tool. So I'm going to delete all this stuff, but I'm going to come back over here, and I'm going to start by using my polyline tool, okay? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start, I'm going to start this corner, and I'm going to draw kind of the front shield and the hood. I'm going to use my ortho mode to get my hood straight to start with. It doesn't finish that way. And then I'm going to turn the ortho mode off, so just for a second. And then I'm going to use my arc, because at the end of the hood, it starts to curve. So A for arc, and notice I still have my object snap on nearest, and I get a little bit of a curve on there. Okay, and I can start to draw the hood I want. If I don't really like it, I can of course pull this down, put a little more on there. But you can play with it, and now it's a nice smooth transition from the straight line to the arc, and that's why I like to use it. Now sometimes I I need to fix things, like for instance, I want to be able to do what's called a fillet here in a second. You can't do fillets with polylines, but what I could do is I could select this. I could use a command called explode. So I actually just type in explode right here at the bottom. I press enter, and now it explodes that back into lines and arcs. Okay? And the reason I want to do that is because I want to put a curve in here, and I want it to be a perfect curve that's tangent to both these lines. So, and I'm going to do the same up here. Uh, so I'm going to use the fillet command, and it's right here. Fillet, okay? Again, it gives me options. It gives me some commands or some what to do next and some options. Well, rather than select first object, we're actually going to use what's called a radial fillet, okay? We're going to define a radius to put the curve right here. Okay, so I'm going to type in R radius. Great. Specify fillet radius. I'm just going to guess. See what I like here. I'm going to try uh, two inches. Okay, and you can try whatever you want. Enter. Now select first object. Now select second object, and that puts now a perfect fillet right in there. I can then come in here and start to trim out parts of my truck that I don't like or need, and get rid of those guys. I just has a quick tr command, trim command select everything and trim the parts that I don't want. I can come in and fill it again. Uh, this time I may want a little bit of rate R for radius again, a little bit bigger fillet. Maybe I'm going to do uh, four inches. And I can fill it the top right there. Okay. This guy no longer is needed because I kind of can now see the difference between my hood and my 
cabin of my truck. Okay, and I could begin to draw stuff. Other things that I could do is I could put in, I could use the rectangle tool to put in the window. Okay, but the window is not a perfect rectangle. It actually has fillets along the edge. So let's do a couple things here. Let's again, it's like a polyline. It's selected, all connected. So let's explode it. Okay. Now they're all their own lines. I can use the fillet command again. And radius, I'm going to do uh, one inch. Oops, sorry, radius, enter, one inch. And before I start selecting, actually, I don't want to do this over and over and over again, do each one of these corners four times. So I'm going to use multiple, M for multiple. And now, if I select, it'll let me do more than one with the same radius. I can just do all the corners like so. Okay, And then I could use the offset. And let's say I want to go an inch. And I can do the inside of those windows. I could also do the same over here and so forth. Uh, and you can continue to play with it again, of course. You can copy it. CO is the quick command. I type in CO down here. That will give me copy. Of course, copies LA is also up here. And specify base points where I'm just going to grab it from. I want it to be perfectly aligned, so I'm going to turn on ortho mode. And I can put in my second window right there. And you guys can begin to draw and play with that. Eventually, you guys will get something that looks like this guy. And of course, you can customize it, color it, put in you know, some sweet exhaust and that such sort of thing. But you should have a lot of fun with it. That should be enough to get you started, at least for now. Hope you guys enjoy it.